Hello, calculus students. Let's do some more test prep questions here. We're going to talk about inverse derivatives. Some of these are a little bit difficult, but this first one, hopefully, the only thing that fouled you up a little bit might have been this ARC. So just remember, arc tangent is just exactly the same thing as tangent inverse of x. That's the ex that's they're the exactly the same thing. So uh, just taking the derivative of this one, it's just one over x minus derivative of sine is cosine x plus and then tangent, if you remember that, that, that one does not start with an s, the tangent inverse. So it does not have a square root, nor does it have subtraction. And so we can put either the x squared first or the 1. It doesn't really matter. 1 plus x squared or x squared plus 1, same thing, uh, 1 over that. And then plus 2 raised to the x, 2 raised to the x times the natural log of x because it wasn't e to the x. If it was e to the x, we'd just say the answer is e to the x. Oh, not natural log x, sorry. Mess that up. Natural log of 2, whatever the base is. Natural log of the base. Sorry about that. Okay, so now this right here, this is not part of the equation. It's not part of the function. It's just defining where the domain was. Mainly that was to help us with uh, dealing with this arctangent thing right here, but don't worry about it. This Sometimes they'll have these on here, and it just helps identify the domain, but it doesn't change anything with the process of finding the derivative. Number two, what is an equation of the line tangent to y equals blah, 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 at x equals blah, blah? So what is the equation for the tangent line? So if we look at all these answers, you can see it's y minus y1 equals the slope. So we're trying to find this, y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So they already give us what our x value is. So right here, it's going to be x minus the square root of 3 equals, over here we have y minus. Uh, okay, so this is the answer. We just got to fill in the m and the y value. So maybe, can we narrow anything down? x minus the square root of 3. They're all x minus the square root of 3, so that doesn't help us narrow anything down. So how about if we take the slope next? Well, the slope is just the derivative. So what's the derivative of tangent inverse? We just did that one. It is 1 over 1 plus x squared. That's the derivative. Uh, so now let's plug in a square root of 3, and we're going to get 1 over 1 plus 3, which is 1 to the 4th. So the slope is 1 to the 4th, because slope of the tangent line and derivative are equivalent. So which one of these has a 1 4th? This one has one right there, and that's it. This has got to be the answer then, because this is the only one with 1 4th. Now, uh, so we didn't have to go through the process of finding the y, but let me just show you what it means to figure out what the y value would be. If we needed to say y equals the tangent inverse of the square root of 3, how do we get that? That's the same thing as saying, remember the inverse is if you swap things around, it'd be the same thing as saying tangent of x is equal to the square root of 3. So we didn't do the inverse and we just did this. They're identical. So what would the angle be, if you think about our, uh, maybe on our unit circle, quadrant number one, what angle here between 0 and pi over 2, between these angles, what would give you a tangent of the square root of 3? So that would be where you need a square root of 3 over 1, where, where sine would be like the square root of 3 over 2, and the cosine would be 1 half, and that's going to happen at pi over 3. So of these three marks here, in the middle, we'd be looking at this one. The pi over 3 will give you a tangent that's equal to square root of 3. So that's why it is pi over 3. But again, you didn't have to go through all that work, because as soon as we saw the 1 fourth, then that was the only answer that it could possibly be. Number 3, this brings us back to unit 1, one of my favorite types of problems, and that is when you're approaching negative infinity, so remember, you're approaching negative infinity. So yes, we're gonna. none of this matters because we're going off to infinity. So this plus 3 is like nothing. This plus x plus 1, that, it means nothing. It's piddly compared to the leading coefficients here and the leading terms. So when I square something and then take the square root, it's just x on bottom. And on top, it's 2x. So really, this is just going to equal 2. So if you immediately said that's the answer, that is wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because on the bottom, this will always be positive. Because even though we're plugging in a really big negative number, we're squaring it and then taking the square root. On top, it's going to be negative. 
So on top we'll have a negative 2, on bottom we'll have a positive 1, and that's why it's negative 2. Number 4 deals with the derivative of an inverse. So it says here that g of x is the inverse of x. So if we're trying to find g prime, that just means we're trying to find the derivative of the inverse. So that means, let me just write this over here, that g prime of x is going to equal the derivative of the inverse of f, which is this. So this is just to help us remember what all that fancy derivative inverse notation stuff is. So there we go. So now we need to figure out a couple things. We need to figure out what is the inverse of f. Actually, let's not do that. Let's just figure out f prime first. So f prime of x will equal 6x minus 1. OK. We need to plug in a 10 into this, right? We've got to plug a 10 into this x. So if this becomes a 10, I'm going to erase this so we can see it. That x becomes a 10, and that x would then become a 10, like so. Then we got to first figure out the f inverse of 10. Well, if this is f of x. That means that we'd be saying 10 is equal to 3x squared minus x, like that. All right, so now how do we solve this? Well, set it equal to 0. 0 equals 3x squared minus x minus 10. And now you can either try to factor this, or you could use the quadratic formula. Either one is going to work for you. But we don't have a calculator, so you'd have to be able to either be good at factoring or just have the quadratic formula memorized. And once you solve all that, you're going to end up with x equals 2, or x will equal negative 5 halves. So we have two different answers. So if this is what x equals, just remember, we were doing the inverse. That means that's what this whole thing is going to equal. I know that's a little confusing, because when you're talking about inverse, it's going the other direction. That's why we said it, it equaled this from the original function, that 10 was the y instead of the x. Solve for x, it actually spits out two different y values. So our answer then is either going to be 1 over f prime of 2, or it's 1 over f prime of negative 5 halves. So you just have to plug those in and figure out which one works for this problem. OK, the last one is just taking the derivative. This one's pretty straightforward, but I do want to show you something. Subtract 1, or in other words, subtract 2 over 2, uh, and you'll get 3 halves. So when you take put the fourth, uh, let's see here, you plug in a 4. We're raising it to the 3 halves. What a lot of students will do is they'll do 4 to the third power first. Uh, 4 to the third power is a pretty big number. I don't even remember what it is. I think it's 64, I think. But what I'd recommend is don't do the third power. Do the 1 half power first. In other words, this is the same thing as 5 halves times, uh, not 4, but I'm going to do the square root of 4 because 4 raised to the 1 half is the square root of 4, which is 2 raised to the third. So take the square root first. That's a lot easier. And then 2 to the third is 8. And then you can simplify it from there. All right, that's the end of it. Good luck on that mastery check.